잠시 안내 말씀드리겠습니다. 지금부터 강연 번역에 대한 간단한 설명 드리고 보겠습니다. 지금 보고 계시는 그 벽면에도 있듯이 QR코드를 스캔해서 번역 플랫폼으로 접속한 뒤에 6자리 입자 코드를 입력하시고 한국어를, 한국어를 선택하여 번역 서비스를 이용하실 수 있습니다. 입장 코드 같은 경우에는 화면에 벽면에도 있고 나가, 나가보시면 나가 엑스배너에도 확인하실 수 있습니다. 이번 시간에는 약 30분간 From v a b e r to OpenStack Red Redefining the Virtual Nation and the Scale with Open Source Software라는 주제로 연사자 다섯 분께서 발표해 주도록 하겠습니다. 큰 박수를 받아주시길 바랍니다. 
you know, opportunity for alternatives. But I would love to hear um, what have you seen in, in your businesses, uh, what has the reaction been from customers where uh, they, they were relying on VMware and uh, you know, perhaps they are interested in alternatives or you know, really demanding alternatives? Just what, what are you seeing with, with your customer base in regard to VMware currently? Okay, I can share some information first. Uh, from my side, I, I think there are um, two main impacts uh, for our customer. Uh, the first one is uh, the business, business price uh, increased. Uh, because uh, we move, uh, we're no longer uh, be available on the paper share license and uh, shipped to the subscriptions. After that, uh, 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 some operator like uh, in Middle Eastern operator, the, the business price increased by four times, and uh, also the business price of uh, uh, one European uh, operator increased by ten times. I remember. Uh, was those forced, just forced them uh, to uh, looking for, start looking for alternatives. Uh, the second one is uh, service degradation. Uh, because we were focused, only focused on the top 2,000 customers. Some regional offices, such as uh, uh, Philippines and uh, Thailand were closed. Uh, the weak support also affects the customer satisfaction. Okay, Rico, feel free to add. So yeah, from uh, I just I think that's a good point. And I, from my perspective, like uh, I mentioned earlier about the Geico and the promo, uh, promo rec. Uh, but I think if you think from their perspective, actually the entire uh, license fee and all the changes that Procom has brought in. Uh, it's for just if you are a small user, the, 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 the impact may not be big. You just interest about interest about this topic, but for them, it's like multiply and multiply and multiply about the money and time and the risk. So for them, it's like suddenly become a very urgency stuff. Uh, in the use, you, you just warning about the vendor lock-in, and as long as you you just trying to help them to get out of this vendor vendor locking uh, uh, nightmare. Yes, we're similar to the rest of them. We had a lot of customers panic over the price, and you know, customers who were billing two million now they're billing twenty million. Um, so forex, ten x, you see it in the news. It's very real. We're seeing it. The the one big one that we really had was panic because we had a lot of customers on the free versions of VMware, and so they liked free um, and no cost. And what, what do you mean by the free ESX, versions? ESX, like they were running the ESX six version of a hypervisor and saying, oh hey, this is great, it'll run forever. They didn't need all the orchestration things and what have you, and um, and so for them it was a panic, like oh my gosh, we got to start paying. We need a provider who can sell us licenses, or we have to, like, so what do we do? So there's just a lot of panic in general at the start, um, and and so I mean I. It, it, it was how fast can you guys get us on a separate platform? And um, a lot of them were considering hyperscale or I'll license it in an Amazon or an Azure or something like that. Um, and so for us, it was, I hate to say it, we're very opportunistic um, because it's like, well, why would you go there? We can still give you open source. We can give you something that does what you want and meets your budget. So. Kind of were also heroes, which is neat, but that panic was like that. That really set it hard for them at first. Okay. Well, um, I we are quite a ways into this since the Broadcom acquisition. A lot of these licensing changes were announced six-ish months ago or so. Um, I know that that uh, VMware has also done some licensing deals, they've gone back with customers and renegotiated and, and tried to work things out. Um, my question is, do you think that that is is working? Or, you know, you, you said that you, you had some early customer interest that was, that was verging on panic. 
Uh, do you think the VMware has stemmed that tide, or do you think that uh, the damage is done and, and this is actually continuing to accelerate? So guys, please don't hate me. Um, we're a VMware Pinnacle partner. <laughs> um, so we kind of get both sides of the VMware and the OpenStack, and I ran our VMware um, pre-sales group for a long time, so I'm still very much in that world. And so speaking from actual true experience, there was the panic. We saw the cost come out. Because we're a Pinnacle partner, we're now also a reseller, and absolutely that trust was broken. Um, that's when we talk to those customers exploring the VMware relicense is they're looking for short options. How, how can we um, get something six months or a year while we explore our other alternatives? So de definitely that trust is broken. There's other ones who just operationally in the way they work, the trust is broken, but they kind of are like, well, we have nowhere to go. This is how we're operating. We can't, don't have time to re-innovate. We need to maintain this momentum that we got going. Then they're just going to go with it. But for sure, the trust is broken. Well, uh, let me throw another question out there. And uh, Duck, maybe you can chime in here. Um, who, who has uh, already done a VMware to OpenStack migration? Have, have all of you done that already? OK, can, can you tell us a little bit about that uh, that migration, um, you know, what was it the price motivation, kind of what the motivation was, and how it went? Uh, well, um, our company, you can tell, um, we built our first cloud, um, private cloud, since uh, 2018. So uh, when we built uh, the first uh, cloud infrastructure, we moved all the IT uh, uh, to the OpenStack. And um, uh, the uh, motivation uh, start from uh, from uh, that time. Uh, so when we provide uh, public cloud service on uh, uh, two years ago, um, we also provide uh, service that uh, help uh, other company in uh, Vietnam to uh, migrating uh, from OpenStack you know, from uh, VMware uh, to uh, OpenStack. And uh, we uh, we seen a rise uh, of uh, you know. Um, um, the the right of demand uh, in um, both uh, public sector and also enterprise, and uh, they uh, mm, they think uh, about the how to avoid vendor locking and uh, reduce cost, and um, they just are considering uh, how uh, how their uh, their staff can manage after change from VMware to active solutions, uh, and. Uh, um, we usually uh, gave um, them uh, as a, a better, better is the best solution for the migration, mm -hmm. and uh, we use uh, our sky as a study for them that uh, we already move all the uh, nearly all uh, and maybe um, uh, ninety percent uh, IT infrastructure to the ops, and we uh, success. So um, the, we can uh, give uh, our experience to the our customers to move uh, and the uh, same Okay. Anyone else want to talk about a, a, a yes, go ahead, Rika. So yeah, so uh, I think about about the migrate. Uh, I mean, from, from my side, probably, probably pretty much about the demos. Uh, and so, uh, so me and Don, we, we actually have a time to earlier to talk about a little bit of detail and technicals. And the, but we, we find out that uh, everybody trying to escape from the nightmares. And uh, others actually already have some like popular tools there to help you to, to, to do the migrate. But it's about how you can uh, integrate things together and give your team a better experience and give the, the user a better experience because they already, to think about it, already, they already lose the trust to uh, be aware. Uh, so they don't want to have, a, the, the, the thing they don't want to have is a bad experience. Uh, so I think, I think that will be something that when we, when we try to uh, do, the, do the entire migration, there will be something to have to plan forward. And, and even like probably better documentation is, so forward. 
the architecture of file is a closed pushing, it's open. Actually, every step for the boost, like we are going to stack it at the same time, uh, the architecture of the architecture. And uh, so, also when we start to that the ETS is standard, uh, we can use a similar flow uh, to, to that deployment, the upgrade, and the service of what the life cycle management uh, features. So, uh, um, everybody, um, in some projects, uh, we have already migrated the, the customer from the realm to the stack. No, and also uh, when you mention like uh, some Europe bigger tier uh, like uh, just the uh, uh, who using uh, who is using them were about uh, and, uh, more than seven years uh, now the uh, has started uh, to the migration uh, from Wimwa to the stack in uh, six. Uh, uh, operation, uh, operation, operation controls uh, network uh, this year. And uh, from Huawei's uh, solution, I think uh, uh, actually because of the architecture is open, I think uh, the migration is not big issues for us. We just uh, we based on the architecture we support the uh, platform and we use as a standard uh, process to do that. Okay. So uh, I mean they are both uh, they both support virtualization, but OpenStack and VMware have pretty different uh, historical patterns and users. Um, besides, we talked a lot about kind of the business and the finance motivation. What about like the actual technology, the result afterward? What's what's mapping well? Where are their challenges? What's what what should people be thinking about if they want to embark on this journey? Um, so I'd like to start, and I think Doug will have a very um, similar answer. I've been fortunate to watch how his group operates at Viettel, and they're amazing there. And we're, our con companies are very similar um, because we take that approach of here's how you operate in the VM world, and there's how you got to change things for OpenStack. And we try to educate our customers on there's a lot of similarities, right? OBS and, and um, NSX have a common ancestor with Nasira. So it, we try to build off of what they know. So, hey, you're already aware with this. Here's something very similar. You're used to how hypervasors work. Here's something similar. And, and at, across the board at the IaaS and networking level, it's a pretty straightforward conversation with people. It's only when we start getting into the advanced features where someone's saying, oh, I'm taking advantage of full HCX and, and these really neat stretch clusters across multiple locations and things like that, that we have to get in the weeds with customers at a very deep technical level. Because it, no knock on, on um, OpenStack, it wasn't focused on that. Neither was VMware when it first came out. Like I remember doing the very first SRF failover. We had all sorts of problems in SAM with volume renames and one's IDs not matching and all that. It took them a while to figure that out. And OpenStack's trending that direction. We have neat tools like Mazakari and things like that, but um, we still have to solve that through third, third, third parties in OpenStack, which there's a lot of neat third parties out there like Haystacks and Twilio and Storeware and all that. So it's not to say we don't have it. It's just we might have some things that are perfectly embedded in the VMware ecosystem because they've had more time to develop it, and OpenStack is still just plain old catch up there. But we still have solutions that we can do. The neat thing about when we do get past those hurdles is explaining to them how you can integrate Kubernetes more natively into OpenStack. Right, and now we can use Kubernetes operators to do things, and we can take um, different open source platforms and integrate them better because of the way the APIs work. And Keystone is just amazing at federating across things. So, getting over that hump of the technology comparison, we can usually talk about how OpenStack is superior when you want to operate in what we all call the pets versus cattle. You know, if you guys remember that from way back when. Right, and, and show them the automation is better. Right, so so at, at the IaaS level is very similar. At the more advanced things that they want to do, it's it's sorry, just to wrap up, it's it's not there. 
But again, even using third parties, we're going to save a lot more money than like if you look at an ACX license, that's thirty five hundred dollars per um, socket, right? Like add that up across large multiple like environments, and that cost gets blown out of the water really quick versus a third party tool. So not only can we solve in third party, we can solve it in a more inexpensive uh, right. Yeah, I think I think that pretty much summarizes a lot of the things. Um, I just want to add a few points on top. Uh, not, not necessarily to be the all the benefit for OpenStack, but also when uh, to to let let them have the chance to rethink about this, their their architectures, so they're going to have a learning curve. And the learning curve is going to be a little painful because they already get used to VMware a lot. And so it's about redo the, all the automations that when there was VMware to provide, but now it's OpenStack can provide. Uh, and OpenStack provide that pretty, pretty well, plus OpenStack with Kubernetes together. The entire structure is like overall uh, bring to the customer. Now they just had to adopt one by one. Not just the VMs they migrate to, but also the, the size structure. Um, and also, uh, use you using VMware, you're just a private cloud. Now you can't have a chance to say, you want, I want to go to private, or I want to go to uh, any open say public cloud. So, well, I, I, can, I can do that. No, no, sorry, that's actually a really good point. Um, one of the things is you talk to people about moving from OpenStack to VMware. We cannot stress enough, it's a cloud operating model. That's how you need to look at OpenStack. Now's your chance to take advantage of automation, right? Most people won't buy the VCF licenses because they're too expensive, right? Aria, what's that? That's too much money. Like, I can't get my management to buy off on that. In OpenStack, we could just do it. So that's a very, very good point that Rico brings up, that OpenStack gives you that cloud operate model and, and, and definitely needs to be taken advantage of when, when doing those migrations. Yeah, um, uh, for my uh, based on my uh, observation, I think um, uh, uh, technically uh, OpenStack and uh, VMware have different architecture, different uh, uh, deployment uh, model. So uh, for the people, for the staff, for the engineer who uh, belong uh, uh, an uh, organization that uh, already running on the VMware and they want to move to OpenStack, they need to uh, study, need to learn, need to. Uh, yeah. uh, learn how to um, deploy, how to uh, maintain OpenStack smoothly. You know, um, OpenStack like somehow we need uh, uh, community support, uh, and uh, yeah, VMware they have their own uh, support, so they are different. Uh, and the engineer need to um, uh, change the uh, uh, skill and uh, have uh, uh, the uh, uh, study about the new technology to to move. And um, I, I know that um, some company like uh, SPA or Mentis they provide the uh, training service. And so uh, that's a good point for the uh, engineer to um, have a good uh, motivation from anyway. I think that's it very well, and on top of that, I think that's also something that we bring to the customer is about the communities. So they suddenly they have the idea about the community. We actually some of the customers get really excited when we're talking about yeah we have something we can fix in the community, and they're going to start asking okay how long is the community going to take that fix? I think we're pretty soon. Yeah, well, I, I think that's, you know, the community is definitely a selling point, but I, I think also that it's important to remember that you know, all of you work at big companies, and you know, a lot of you provide services to, to OpenStack customers as well. So it's not like they just have to go out and run. They can, you know, they can get, get services and support from, from a whole ecosystem of, of businesses all over the world. 